of five. Today we will start our new lesson, chapter six, basic geometry. Then geometry is one of the most important branch of mathematics. Then geometry derived from a Greek word geometron, which means earth measurement. Once again, geometry is one of the branch of mathematics. Then geometry derived from a Greek word geometron, which means earth measurement. We will see what are the fundamental elements of geometry. First one is point, second one line, third one line segment, fourth one ray, and fifth one angle. Children, let's learn more about these elements. Then first element is point. Then we can say that point is an exact location or position. Then it is the basic unit of geometry and it is denoted by dot. This symbol and it is named with capital letter. Once again, point is an exact location or position. Then it is the basic unit of geometry. Then the point is denoted by a dot and name it with a capital letter. For example, point A, point P, point X. These four are points. Clear? Then next one is line. Line is a collection of points. Then line has no starting point and no end point. Then line can be extended endlessly in both the directions. Here we can see a line AB. The arrow mark in both directions indicates that it can be extended like this. This can be extended in both directions. So this line AB can be written as AB like this. Line AB is written like this. And this is line PQ and it can be written as PQ. And we have to draw this symbol. Next one is line segment. You can see that line segment is a part of line. Then it has a starting point and an end point. Let's see. Here we can see that line segment AB. Here A is the starting point and B is the ending point. So we can write line segment AB as like this. No arrow marks in the line. Then here x, y is another line segment. Here x is the starting point and y is the ending point. And we can write the line segment x, y as this. The next one is ray. We can say that ray is also a part of line. Then ray has one fixed point and other side extends endlessly. Here we can see that line. Here we can see that ray a, b. Here a is fixed point and here we can see that we can extend. Like this we can extend. So ray A B can written as like this. Clear? Then here ray P Q. Here P is the fixed point and Q can be extended like this. And we can write the ray P Q as like this. And when two rays meet at a point, an angle is formed. Then this is the symbol for angle. Then the point where the rays meet is known as vertex and the rays is known as arms. So we will draw an angle. This is one ray and this is another ray. So this point, the point where two rays join together are known as vertex. And this ray is known as arm. And this ray is also known as arm. So here we got one angle. Then we can name it as A, B, C. So how will you write this angle? Our symbol is like this. Angle A, B, C. A, B, C. Or we can read it as Angle C B A. C B A. Once again, the point where two rays join together are known as vertex and these rays are known as arms. So we will write this 
angle mass angle a b c or angle c d a children moving to the next topic measuring angles angle is measured in degrees degree is denoted as this symbol then we use a protractor to measure angles that means protractor is an instrument used for measuring angles then a protractor has two sets of scales first one is inner scale second one outer scale then both having the measurement from 0 degree to 180 degree in different directions now children this is a protractor we already learned protractor has two scale then this is the inner scale starts from 0 to 180 and this is the outer scale that starts from 0 to 180 in opposite direction then we can see one line here this line is known as the base line and the midpoint of this base line is known as center now let us measure angle a b c so first step you have to place the protractor in such a way that the center of the protractor coincide with the vertex of the angle like this you have to put the center of the protractor should be should coincide with the vertex of the angle then you have to note down the measure here you have to use the inner scale so starting from 0 0 10 20 30 40 50 so we got angle a b c equal to 50 degree next question find angle p q r so first step we have to place the protractor in such a way that center of the protractor coincide with the vertex of the angle like this you have to put then you have to measure the angle in a scale we have to note down that means 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 so or angle is angle p q r is 90 degree next question find angle x y z so we have to place the protractor in such a way that center coincide with the vertex of the angle like this you have to place the protractor then we have to count from 0 inner scale we are using so 1 sorry 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 100 10 so after 110 we have 111 112 113 114 115 so this measurement is 100 and angle xy is at equal to 150 degree next find angle l m n so place the protractor like this then count from 0 0 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 110 120 then we can see this arm is in between 130 and 120 so after 120 we have 121 122 123 124 and 125 so our measurement is angle l m n is 125 degree now children moving to exercise 6.1 question number 1 use a protractor to find the measure of these angles a you have to find angle p q r so place the protractor like this then note down the measure here 0 10 20 30 40 then here we can see that the line is in 41 42 43 
so we can say that angle p q r equal to 43 degree like this you have to do this work